I want to be clear, I am fully in favor of video games being available on as many different platforms as possible. The more people that get to experience a game for themselves, the better. But I can't help but notice that, aside from Nintendo, the trend of true exclusive games that are only available on one platform isn't really a thing these days. This leads me to ask what I think is a very important question. Are exclusive games dying? The PlayStation 5 has been out for over two years now, but the number of truly exclusive games for the system is extremely low. You can practically count them on your hands. Most of the high-profile games released for PS5, like Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, and Spider-Man Miles Morales, have released on both PS4 and 5. Additionally, PlayStation have also started porting a bunch of its games to PC as well. This has never happened before with any of the previous console generations. Up until the PS4, Sony was always able to make a clean break from the previous generation's PlayStation and make everyone upgrade to the new one. But with the PS5, there don't seem to be very many blockbuster exclusive games for it that would, by themselves, justify buying one. You can blame this whole situation on the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the resulting global semiconductor chip shortage and the surge in demand for computer parts, what with everyone having to stay home. PS5s and Xbox Series Xs have been notoriously difficult to get throughout the past couple of years. With retailers like Amazon, Best Buy, and Walmart having scheduled drops at these consoles every so often, followed immediately by scalpers snatching them all up and reselling them for well over the retail price. It was only just a few months ago that they became easier to obtain, with Sony releasing a God of War Ragnarok bundle for PS5 last November, and Microsoft releasing a Forza Horizon 5 bundle for Xbox Series X this past January. Hopefully from now on, there won't be any need to worry about scheduled console drops, needing to get an invitation to buy one on Amazon, or scalpers taking all the inventory for themselves. So far, the PS5 has sold at a slower rate than the PS4 did, selling 32.1 million units as of February 2023, versus the PS4 selling 37.7 million units in the same time frame. The difference is, the PS4 didn't have to deal with a global pandemic, a semiconductor chip shortage that ate into its availability, and scalpers buying up all the available stock to make a quick buck. As a direct result of the console shortage, Sony decided to manufacture 1 million extra PS4 units just last year to make up for the lack of PS5s. Sony's not quite ready to move on to a PS5-only generation like they planned because of how much the pandemic messed up the world, as well as the fact that the PS5 is backwards compatible with the PS4 anyway. On the other hand, the Xbox Series X and S combined are estimated to have sold around 18.5 million units by the end of last year, despite not having any official sales figures published. That follows the pattern from last generation, where the PS4 outsold the Xbox One by a more than 2 to 1 ratio. Xbox feels the closest to being redundant with PCs, mainly since Microsoft owns both Xbox and Windows, and especially since many of Xbox's more notable titles like Halo Infinite or the recently released Hi-Fi Rush are also on PC. But now that both PlayStation and Xbox have been putting games onto PC, that just further highlights the redundancy of this generation's hardware. I can't help but wonder if the PS5 will ever get out of this pandemic-stricken rut, and give us more than just a handful of truly exclusive games.
It feels like modern console gaming has reached a plateau with its hardware power. The newest consoles only have shinier and more realistic graphics, better processing power, faster loading times, and other supplementary features, like streaming TV shows or movies, and posting screenshots and clips directly to social media to justify their purchases, instead of focusing mainly on fun and exciting exclusive games. Microsoft seem to know this, as they've been shifting their focus away from exclusive games for several years now. The Series X and S have backwards compatibility with all previous Xbox consoles, to varying degrees. Xbox and PC Game Pass exist to encourage people to try all kinds of different games on their systems at a recurring fee, and Xbox Play Anywhere allows customers to buy and play digital Xbox games with this special label on either their Xbox console or Windows computer, and most importantly, Phil Spencer stated back in 2020 that all first-party Xbox Series X games would also get Windows PC releases, as a direct defiance of the idea of console-exclusive games. Microsoft clearly stopped relying on the idea of exclusive games to entice their customers a while ago. But as Microsoft's direct rival, Sony have always relied on exclusive IPs and games, as well as capitalizing on the other game companies' mistakes to drive sales of each new PlayStation they make. These tactics may have worked really well in the past few console generations, but these days, the gap in power between PCs and modern consoles is basically non-existent. PlayStation porting their high-profile games to PC is solid proof of that. Now, to be fair, Sony have also been relying on subscribers to PlayStation Plus, and offering hundreds of games to stream to your PC or download to your console for one recurring fee, just like Xbox Game Pass. But the overall impression I have of Sony is that they've always relied more on exclusive games than Microsoft has, as well as the power of the PlayStation brand to sell their consoles, as opposed to mainly the PS Plus service. I just have to wonder how relevant and popular the PlayStation 6 and the next Xbox console will be in the future once they inevitably come out. How much more processing power, graphical fidelity, and online capabilities will consoles acquire before they become totally indistinguishable from PCs? Video game consoles' main purpose has always been, and always should be, to play fun, exciting, and unique games. Exclusive games just give each console a one-of-a-kind edge in the market, but the idea of an exclusive game these days is very different to what it was a decade ago. The number of exclusives for PlayStation and Xbox consoles has been steadily decreasing with each passing generation as each new console becomes more and more like PCs. I'm mainly talking about Sony, and to a lesser extent, Microsoft. Nintendo has nothing to worry about in terms of how many exclusive games they have for the Switch. But then again, Nintendo have always done their own thing, focusing on creating fun and unique gameplay experiences only available on its platforms, instead of cranking up the processing power and graphics to 11 like Sony and Microsoft do. So most of what I've said in this video does not apply to Nintendo, but for Sony and Microsoft, the idea of having true exclusives for their latest consoles seems to be fading away, and with both companies now porting their games to PC, I feel like we're in a time period where it almost doesn't matter which glowing box you want to buy in order to play games. Almost. I've been an avid console gamer for most of my life, but I definitely see the advantages that PC gaming has over consoles these days. I guess I'm just worried that PlayStation and Xbox might lose their unique identities as game consoles and become wannabe PCs, if they haven't already. I suppose the whole idea of an exclusive game these days is painfully limiting and not consumer-friendly at all compared to several console generations ago. And as I said at the start of this video, I am all for games being made available to as many platforms and players as possible. It's just that the trends I've been seeing with game consoles these days show a very different industry climate from what I experienced growing up as a kid. 
If you take just one thing away from this video, it's that this video is meant to be an overview of as much information as possible about the current generation of gaming that shows where the gaming industry could likely be headed in just a few years. Maybe game companies could put more investment into VR systems, like PlayStation is doing with the PSVR 2. That still shows a lot of room for improvement and evolution. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you'll support my future videos too. See you next time.